Hello, everybody. Super excited to be connecting with you again today. We're going to dive into the Akashic Records for today's Conversations in Consciousness. Joining me once again is one of my good buddies and right-hand woman, Violet. She walks with me through everything, and I'm super excited to have her points of view and her shares from her own world with this um, coming forward to you guys today. So we're just going to make sure we get the video rolling, make sure it's live on Facebook, because we all know how technology is in Mercury retrogrades. <laughs> so we're going to double check, cross our T's, dot our I's, and make sure we're good to go. Once Violet lets me know, um, she'll give me the thumbs up and then we can start talking. Oh, I see somebody starting to like the video. So that means we are cooking. Excellent. Yeah, it okay. looks like we're live. Um, yeah, we're going. So hello, everybody. Okay, super excited for this conversation. The Akashic Records were the bane in my, <laughs> like the bane of my existence for so long because they took me so long when I was first starting to get into them. And I actually want to tell a little bit of that story before we super get going because I know we have a lot of beginners in this group who are really doubting, you know, am I good enough? Do I have the tools? Am I going to be able to get all this information? Guys, this stuff, some of it came absolutely natural to me and other things I had to work my tail off for to figure out how to get in there. And the Akashic Records at that time was one of those things. So I opened up to the Akashic Records probably back in about 2012. I had already started going through a pretty big transformation. My son was born and I had started undergoing some training as an intuitive. I was really, really obsessed with like the Wiccan and Pagan arts. I was obsessed with energy healing and Reiki at the time. And then somehow the Akashic Records fell into my lap. So like a lot of people, what did I do? I didn't go to a training. I went and picked up a book. <laughs> And this book is by one of the leading authors on Akashic Records. And I read it cover to cover in like two hours because I was so excited. And then I went to try all of the exercises and failed. <laughs> it was like, I thought for sure, because this person was the best and all the information was there and the steps were there that I would just follow the steps and in I would go and I would have these epiphanies and the visions would come to me and the movies of who I was in my past life would just appear and that really wasn't the case and because of that I got a little discouraged and in fact it probably took me about 30 sessions of meditations at that time before I actually got into the vibration and the frequency of the Akashic Records what I learned from that whole experience though, is that there's an easy way to do things and there is a really long road to do things. And I had to really destroy and uncreate all the beliefs that I had still in my body that you know, gaining a new skill had to be hard or that you had to really work for it to come true. I had to get rid of that before it would just flip on. Vi, do you wanna share a little bit about your own experience with coming into the Akashic Records? Yeah, so uh, I heard about them through some friends who were uh, able to access them and were giving me some information, but I was like, I need, I want to know how to do this myself. I don't just want to have somebody tell me what's in my Akashic records. Um, so I found a bunch of um, things on YouTube. So there's one that you recommend, Caitlin, usually to people. It's a, it's a prayer. I can't remember who it's by. Um, it's Linda Howes. Linda Howes. Yeah. So I found hers uh, myself and I tried it a bunch of times and nothing happened. <laughs> Literally <laughs> nothing happened. I was like, well, this is stupid. So I just put that on the back burner and then joined your course, Caitlin, and we started doing a bunch of other stuff. And it wasn't until I'd been working with you for probably like a good year and a half before we kind of revisited the Akashic Records thing again. Mm -hmm. and then you led us through our class through a meditation to it and I didn't see anything but I felt the energy of it and it was really really fast and um, so that was new because the first time I tried the Linda Howe one nothing happened but this time I could feel like a, a, a faster energy and so then I tried it again and same thing faster energy didn't really see anything or feel anything and then I think on the third or fourth try um, I actually started seeing what looked like pictures going by really, really fast. I couldn't see what was on them, but it was like they were flipping through really fast. And then I got really excited and it kind of booted me out of that meditative state. <laughs> and so it took me a bunch of tries, uh, same type of thing. Um, yeah, uh, it was really cool the first time I saw the pictures flipping through that, that really validated a lot for me, but it took a lot. And then the, when it actually 
came on full blown when I was able to access the Akashic records, funny enough, was in a workshop, an in-person workshop. And I have found personally, I don't know if this is the same for everyone, but for me, when I come together in a group of people in person, like for retreats and workshops, that's when my abilities turn on and up really, really loud. And I feel like part of it might be that I'm open to the energy of the group. And some of it might be that they have the other people in the group has information or keys for me that if I'm open to it, I'm picking up on. So there's, I mean, there's a lot of potential there, but I know that every time I come together in a group scenario, my abilities like go through the roof. And that was the case with Akashic Records. That's my favorite thing about the retreats, the workshops, the women's circles, is that once we can actually get out of our own way and show up somewhere with our energy field, there is infinite potential for us to pick up all of these different clues. I'm just giggling a little bit. Sarah sharing that she downloaded a book on the Akashic Records with the same thing in mind. Sarah, man, all the power to you. And I'm so glad you're taking this step because that's the first part of all this is actually having the interest and following through. Like we need to follow those nudges and start reading and start getting information. So I hope today's video is gonna help you guys. I hope that some of the things I'm gonna share will maybe debunk some of the myths going on in the Akashic Record community about what it is and what it isn't. And um, I want to share with you guys why I think it's the stepping stone that everybody should start with if they're a brand new beginner. Um, because I know that there are so many options out there for how we could start this intuitive journey. But the thing is, every time we hit a stumbling block, we're stuck we're kind of at a landmine. And what we don't want to have happen is us get to that point and be like, oh, well, I guess this, whatever it is, maybe you took an energy healing course, maybe you went to a retreat, maybe you went to a workshop. We don't want to get to a point where we just allow ourselves to get to another stop point. We want to be able to uncover what it is that we're bumping up against and start working through it. So that's what I'm hoping we can kind of chat about today and see what's going down. Hello, Allison here. Allison sharing she went to a level one Akashic course. That's awesome. Lindsay, Jennifer's here. Nice. Okay, we got lots of friends hanging out with us. So I just wanted to bring this up because I could feel it when you were talking about you said the Akashic records is where people should start as brand new beginners. Yeah. And that to me sounds like a backwards thing than what most people are thinking or feeling or have heard. Like it feels like the Akashic records are the epitome of like when you can access them, you've arrived. Oh my God, no. The Akashic Records is like the bare bone basics, you guys. It is not the epitome, it is not the peak. And this is one of those things that like, I wish these readers and healers would see that there's so much beyond this field. It really is the beginner's playground. And once you can master how to actually work with the Akashic energy, and we'll talk a little bit about the frequencies here in a second, I think I'll do some of my favorite, like my famous art, because that always helps to ground these ideas in. Um, once you can see that this is just the little landscape of her, our humanity and we can start clearing it and getting rid of it. Oh my God, the doors that open for people. I have seen just the most miraculous transformations for people who have brought on this ability and been able to start working in this field. So yeah, I'm glad you said that. My belief is it is absolutely the beginner's tool and we can use it for literally anything. So let's start with the very basics of what the heck are the Akashic Records? Because maybe some of you guys don't know. The Akashic Records are how we as humans store everything that is energetically important to us. So anything that we have had an emotional and mental and physical response to gets stored in our Akashic Records, okay? The Akashic Records is kind of like a library of everything that we have deemed important and significant. So an Akashic record isn't gonna be like, oh, Caitlin Diana was born on October 30th, 1986. And you know, she's gonna die and I don't know, I decided I'm gonna be 104 when I die. That's just my death date, whenever that is. It's not stored in my Akashic records, everything that happened from the moment I emerged from the womb to the moment I go to the grave. That's not how they store. The Akashic records store in something we call resonance fields or resonance loops. So for example, you know, a lot of people like to use the visualization of like books of our life in a library for the Akashic records. This is a really common representation. The books are not birth to death. They are 
like things to like things to opposite things to opposite things. So for example, I might have a resonance field. Oh, my cat is coming to help us with this class. She's jumping in the box. Um, <clears throat> I might have a whole resonance field, a whole Akashic loop on money. I might have a whole resonance field on my relationships with men, how I feel about being a woman, how I feel about being a healer. I might have resonance fields all about self-confidence, but they're not stored birth to death. And because of this, they're much easier to work with than most people assume. And this is what I wish all Akashic teachers knew, because if they did this, we would have so many more people feeling a lot more sovereign and free in their bodies doing the Akashic work. But I think that that part has only come because of where I've gone and channeled and worked with these other beings. Okay, so to recap, the Akashic records are everything that we have deemed important and have had a physical, emotional, and mental response to. So you may have had a physical, mental, emotional response to sweeping a cobblestone road because maybe it had something to do with your social status or what you did or did not get to do in life. But I may have been sweeping the same type of road in my Akashic records at some point in one life and I never registered it to it because it wasn't important. So it's a very individual space and it's a very soul-based space. So that's number one. So then it sounds like the Akashic Records is where we would be storing things like trauma. Absolutely. So anything that happens to us, whether good or bad, stores in there. Now, trauma, think about your own life right now, you guys. How many of you have had something bad happen to you where it's a negative experience and it has definitely clouded over or maybe completely erased any positive thoughts you had about that previous situation. I'll use a restaurant as an example. You know, if you have had six good meals at a restaurant and on the seventh you get food poisoning so violently, what do you remember? You remember the food poisoning. You don't necessarily go back to the good times and you leave the restaurant, right? Like you're not going back. So when we have something negative happen in our Akashic records, it tends to come in hot and heavy. And instead of the records flipping back and back and back and back and further away from our existence as we start to evolve and move through these things, the negative things tend to stay at the surface. This is what actually starts to create things like karma. Karma is not, you did good in this life, so now you're gonna do bad. Karma is like the revolution of how we work through all of the different energy in our life. Karmic loops are these ruts we get stuck in. So for example, if I'm obsessed energetically, it's an interesting word to use, but my team told me to use it, so I'm going to use it. If I'm obsessed energetically about a particular thing that has happened to me in my life, I'm creating a karmic loop by revisiting it, revisiting it, revisiting it, maybe even applying false meaning to it, but that's different conversation, different day. This is where PTSD comes from, you guys. So in our existence, our Akashic records should lay down kind of like layers, you know, just kind of stacking and giving us information. But when we have something super traumatic that we register as an event and somebody has PTSD from it, instead of it falling back, any move that person makes forward with a new piece of information, the trauma pops up to the top. And so they keep re reliving it, reliving it, reliving it. So PTSD work is actually Akashic reconciliation work. This is something I teach to all my advanced decoders because being able to get somebody out of these Akashic loops is just life changing. I can tell a little story about that too in a minute as well. Okay, Violet, did that help clarify that piece? All right. So let's draw a little picture, shall we? Because that's lots of fun. You guys be prepared to be amazed by my art because seriously, I should be in graphic design by now. All right, I am gonna draw this little stick man over here. Mm -mm -mm. Give you some legs. Those are really shoddy legs and you're doing the wave. Okay, so here's you and this is your life. 
Now, when we come through, we are going to have something we call a point of origin. So for this particular instance, I'm just going to make it the sun. Okay, let's say our point of origin for our soul is sun space. When we are choosing to come and incarnate the first time, let me be clear about this, the first time on earth from our point of origin, we came through with some kind of information that we downloaded with us and we brought in as a part of our starseed mission. Okay, so we bring in part of our starseed mission as to why our soul is coming to earth. Then what happens is we emerge from the womb and we go through this process whereby as an infant, we have something we call a trajectory. A trajectory is a plan. It is a proposed outcome. It is all of the thoughts, feelings, emotions of everything we think we would like to get done in this lifetime. But then what happens is we get to be about a year and a half, two years old, and our parents are like, yo, child, you don't get to behave the way you're behaving. Let me start shaping you into a, an appropriate human being, whatever that version is for them. And so we lay down another trajectory. And this is the first trajectory we lay down as soon as our parents start in with discipline that we start shaping ourselves based on external circumstances around us. Now, the external circumstances start to impact this original soul story, and sometimes we'll even push it to the behind. Okay, then we get to four years old-ish, and our parents are like, you should probably start getting smart. You know, you're really not going to make it in this world if you don't know your ABCs, your one, two, threes, and what color goes where and how to shove the rectangle in the rectangle hole. So our parents start instructing us in all of this knowledge that we need. And maybe we start into preschools, kindergartens, things like this. Now we start living up to a standard or we start going into this space where we're trying to please other people with the knowledge or information that we have. We are trying to get into a little bit of the competition grid here because everybody wants to be everybody's favorite little ray of sunshine and the smartest kid in the class, right? So we start getting into the competition grid. Well, this keeps going and going and going for years. Now, I'm only drawing one line, but every time we have a change in idea, we get a piece of inspiration, we lay down a new trajectory, okay? So remember, trajectory just means proposed outcome and plan. Example, a trajectory could be, let's say Violet came to me and she's like, I'm going to change careers. I'm no longer going to be a part of your company and what you're doing. I'm going to be a recycling maven. Okay, Violet, she just made a new trajectory. She's made a new plan. It's going to bump down all of the other trajectories. And the original soul plan is going to get a little bit more buried because we're shaping our experiences based off what's happening in our external environment rather than taking inspiration from our, our original soul story. Okay. So we keep going like this. And then sometime around like usually it's about 15 years old 15 is a very difficult age for most children we get one more huge hormonal spike and at this hormonal spike is typically where we receive our first big realization back from our soul story now, if you guys think back to 15 years old, you may have thought about like, oh my God, I would give nothing to just like, or give everything just to be independent again. Like if my parents could get out of my face, right? You have these moments where you start getting a thread of your own independence. And it usually happens around this age. Now this download, we usually distort it. And you'll notice I drew this download through each of these trajectories each of these trajectories takes the information. It's kind of like a ping pong ball machine. Like you guys have seen those and it, the ball goes back and forth. And it's like ding, 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 ding. And by the time it comes out your brain and your mouth, it has bounced up against every other idea, thought form, belief, everything you know to be true and eventually merges as your own version of truth. Now, each of these, this is a living Akashic record. We are actually in it 
right now, okay? You guys are all writing Akashic Records as we speak. All right, so we have this download come in around 15. But then what happens is we turn like 18, 19, 20, somewhere in there, and we're like, you know what? Enough of this noise. I am my own person. I think I'm going to move out. And we go out and we're like, yeah, I'm going to go to school, going to get a career, going to go to this job. Maybe you're thinking you're going to have a family and you start laying down trajectories still based on societal expectations. So everything that happens in those formative early adult years for most of us in this group, not so much true if any of you guys are under the age of 24 years old. A lot of you guys who are starseeds in that age group, you'll have a little bit different story to this. But any of you guys that are like 28 and up, this is going to be very familiar to you and let me know in the comments if I'm kind of hitting your life on the head right now. Okay, um, around this age. Yeah, that's a great question. We'll talk about that in a sec. Bye. Um, around this age, we have our next big aha from self. This next big aha from self comes from this original star seed and it bypasses some of the old trajectories and we get a hit on this current life that we're living and on this current life that we're living we're like oh my god i actually didn't want to go to school to become that i don't know if i really actually want to get married i don't know if i want to live in this town and so sometime between 25 to 28 sometimes 30 years old we lay down our first soul-led trajectory of what we think to be true for self. And around this age, around 30, because we have our first Saturn return, which is every 30, 28 to 30 years, we start getting hit with all of big life lessons. And we start having these big ahas about everything we need to tear down and put back up. We have this first realization of like, oh my God, I don't even know who I am, who I've become, but I know I'm not exactly this. And I know I have to find out why. So we start searching. And at around 28 to 30 years old, we start opening up and we start going, what else is possible? Maybe we're going to have our first spirit guide encounters. Maybe we're going to come across a healing course that inspires us. Maybe someday by some miracle, a starseed quiz classes your Facebook timeline, you're like, oh, that describes me to T. <laughs> and we start seeking. Okay. And this goes on and on and on. And then around 39, 40 years old, we do another one of these big epiphanies and a pivot. And then it starts usually happening by the decade, if we're slow, by the day, if we accelerate. Okay. So, a question that came in from the chat that Violet just shared with me um, was, how do we unbury the original star seed trajectory? Okay, hold the phone, watch this. You guys mind blown already? <laughs> Let me know if this is like, oh my God, a little bit to us. Um, so what if now we draw on a calendar year? Okay, so let's go January, February, March, April, May, oh, my lines are getting big there. That was a big month, <laughs> June, July, so on and so forth, okay? Let's draw on a calendar because we all know we're on this wheel of the year, right? What if it's possible that every year, let's say your birthday happens to be, I don't know, April 4th, we are going to have a trigger on April 4th of every year on our birthday that will either hit us as this like huge day to celebrate or we'll be so mad or upset or not want to celebrate our birthdays and we'll feel really negatively towards them. And we'll have these blips everywhere. So let's say also that sometime in July of, I don't know, 2002, you had um, an injury happen here that you made important. And let's say that, you know, in new years of every year you contemplate how much it sucks because your new year's resolutions didn't come true right and we have these blips so our akashic records are also cyclical okay so they kind of go around in a circle just the way our same year does so how do we get back to the original starseed trajectory 
we have to start clearing the blemishes from our records that are in our recurrent cycles. So how I get my students to do this, yeah, Facebook memories, Benita, oh my God, they are the worst. That's how I find out exactly who I was at least 12 years ago. And trust me, I was not the person I am today. <laughs> I look at them and it's like, Caitlin is feeling upset that nobody's paying attention to her. Like legit, these are some of the types of things I used to write. So how we clear this is we start watching for our patterns and our cycles because our, our patterns and our cycles are like a portal into our consciousness. Because get this, these trajectories that you just laid out, guys, they're not new. They're not new. If you are an integrated human being, you've already replicated almost all of these exact same events multiple times in your Akashic story. Which means that let's say this little blemish here right oh, back in january where we're mad about what were we mad about oh yeah our new year's resolutions maybe you have been making new year's resolutions for centuries that have never come true we need to go through the akashic records to something we joke about in our community we call it the poo which stands for point of origin we need to go back through the Akashic Records to the very first time you bought into January 1st being the reset of a new year. And that's when you had to lay out all your goals, plans, etc. Then we have to clear the emotional charge. We have to clear any cords and contracts we have with any beings that are connected to it. And then we can collapse it and remove it from our records. As we do that, we create more space for the next thing to come up. Now, most people, when they're being taught the Akashic Records, we find solace in understanding who we are maybe in 1942. Maybe you find some, I don't know, comfort in knowing that you were a midwife or a witch previously, and this is where your healing comes from. But this isn't how we heal with the records. There's so much more to them than that. And that's what I'm passionate about teaching is that this is the beginner's key. You wanna find all of your starseed data, it's behind this. Okay, Violet, catch me up. Any questions I should ask? Yeah, yearly patterns, Sarah, totally. In your relationships, that's absolutely a thing. That is an Akashic memory. Yeah, I think um, a lot of people are resonating with this. It's super clear how you're explaining it. The only questions that I'm sort of coming, that are coming up in my field are um, about Akashic records and past lives, like how those connect. And then can you read information from your starseed lineage in here? Like, is there any galactic past life information in the Akashic records? Okay, so let's, let's start with the first question. So can you read your past life information? Parts of it, yes. Anything you sealed into the Akashic records that was important to you. So if you, if, if it was important to you that you were, you know, a healer in that life, you're going to be able to see a whole bunch of information or download a whole bunch of information about what kind of healing you did. Were you into plant medicine? Were you a quantum healer? Were you playing with all sorts of black magic? Like you're going to be able to see that kind of stuff because it was important to you. In the same type of way, if it was important to you that you were royalty, if it was important to you that, you know, you were a child to this particular person, if it was important to you that you lived on this piece of land, because we can, this is interesting, uh, we can anchor parts of our Akashic records through cording to certain parts of land. And so some of us might have Akashic memories anchored into and corded to things like Oh my, the thing that's saying to my soul forever, I wanted to be in Scotland. Like put a man in, kil in a kilt, play the bagpipes and oh Nelly, I'm done. Like that's my thing. And what I figured out in my Akashic records is that number one, a lot of my first human memories were in Scotland, playing with a lot of the Druidry, the magic, being in that type of culture in, you know, doing all of the folklore dances. I did a lot of singing. I still sing a lot. If you guys hang out with me, you'll get to know that. Um, and when I hear any Scottish Gaelic dialogue coming through, I can sing it and I have no idea where it's coming from. That's an Akashic memory. Okay. So those kinds of draws are also there. Does that answer that part? Yeah, I think it does. 
Okay. Um, Alicia just posted something really interesting. She said, so they're like a keepsake box for your soul. Yes. Okay. And here's what you guys need to know. When we do something called collapsing the Akashic records, we're not destroying them. We're taking out the cyclical nature from them. We're taking out the emotional charge so that we can read them more like an encyclopedia rather than a raunchy like romance novel. Okay, <laughs> hope that most of you can understand the difference between that, right? We know that reading an encyclopedia, we're usually dry eyed and we're like, cool, interesting. Oh, look, that's neat. We get into a novel that we absolutely love and we're like, oh, whoa, this is so cool. Yeah, and you get the feels. Maybe you're crying, maybe you're laughing. We don't want to have that big charge to our Kashuk records because if we do, we're going to keep reliving them. We want to be able to witness them as they've already happened and to evolve from them. Okay. So the second part was, can you read your star seed information from the Akashic records? No. The Akashic records are actually a draconian installation for the reincarnational cycles of humans to keep us on these loops and they use it like a battery pack. And so when we are stuck in the Akashic records, when we are stuck in the incarnational loops and we do not have a choice, we often cannot see past the fourth dimension. So the frequency of the Akashic records, everything we store in there is actually fourth dimensional information. The beings that communicate most through fourth dimension are the Alpha Draconians and a lot of the Iguananoid um, species, Luciferians, Satanics, Demonics, uh, White Lighters, like <laughs> some of the Greys. So a lot of these beings that are not always um, for the betterment and evolution of humanity in the way that we would like to see it in terms of like ascension and growth and hitting these new milestones, that is where this installation came from because it prevented star seeds from leaving and waking up and it prevented star seeds from arriving for a very long period of time. We have learned how to bypass that in a lot of ways now using the walk-in effect. Walk-ins are relatively new. It has only been happening for a couple of hundred years. Um, and this is how we are getting around these draconian measures to start collapsing it. So I'm also very passionate about collapsing the Akashic records because this is how we start to find our soul sovereignty. Now our star seed stories start being stored in an eighth dimensional frequency, eighth to ninth. And up here, we have something called the Halls of Amente. And the Halls of Amente are where we store all of these like train station kind of trajectories and plans and ideas and where we want to go and where we've already been linked to. And we think about it in the traditional chakra teaching system, the eighth dimension is all about enlightenment, like bringing things into the crown. So you could think about it as all of these little rays of light going out to everywhere you've already been, everything you've already once were. And this is how we also start to bring in the light and sound and integrate it into this human body. Okay. Does that mean that we have to collapse all of our Akashic records before we can access the information on our galactic lineage? Not all of them. No. You do not have to go in and clear maybe hundreds or thousands of human lifetimes, depending on how integrated you are, in order to find even like a hair of who you were on a galactic level. Not the case. Oftentimes, we just have to clear the most prominent trauma first. So whatever is your big stumbling block in life. So for a lot of people, let's say it's narcissistic relationships, we often have to go in and clear that particular loop. Um, for a being yesterday that I worked with in his records was this big story about how he was selfish. And in every life, he has had this information come through about how he is so selfish and shouldn't be doing X, Y, and Z because it's taking away from A, B, and Z, for example. And as soon as we cleared that, he had a level of self step forward and was able to go through and do an acceleration in his session. So no, you do not have to have these 100% clear to start accessing, but we do have to get rid of the things that are like mentally, emotionally consuming you. So if you guys are somebody that, you know, you're really, really focused on money or career or relationships, these are Akashic-based data streams. These are Akashic-based loops, and those are the things that we have to go into and clean up. 
Okay. And once you get that little piece out of the way, because we've made it really big and it's often, you know, a molehill that isn't actually a mountain, we can start accessing pieces of us from, you know, these other timelines, these other galaxies, these other realities, sometimes parallel timelines, and we can start grounding that into our human existence. So it's a little bit of a process, but way we go. Okay, I want to touch on something quickly because my team is reminding me to share this and uh, Laura, I want to address her question why we create these records then. Let me tell you, Laura, it wasn't on purpose. Okay, and this next thing I'll tell you might blow your mind with that too. So we as starseed beings, as galactic beings, never used to store our information like this. We didn't put ourselves on these hamster wheels. This was actually an installation that came with the reptilian brainstem. Think about it. The reptilian brainstem, what does it do for humanity? It keeps us on a clock. It keeps us on a hormonal cycle. The reptilian brainstem is, you know, part of how we process. <laughs> like, this was definitely something that was coded into some of the very, very early hybridization and um, genome experiments that happened with humanity. This wasn't something that we came in with when the human was first created. Okay, so why we create these things is because when we are so deep in fourth dimensional frequency, we can't reach, read, or spend time with anything else in these other higher frequencies that are just too fast. Everything in our field gets way too dense. Okay, so there you go. There's some information on that. Um, I think I can take our little funny picture away now. Ye yes, I can. All right. Um, should we clean those loops ourselves or is it safe to let somebody do it? Jana, you kind of have two options. So you know, I like the whole adage of you can give a man a fish, he eats for a day, you can teach the man a fish and he eats for life. I prefer that my students learn it because when you learn it and you can go in on any single trigger that comes up with you, you're empowered to do this healing wherever and whenever it comes up. But yes, you absolutely can. If there is somebody in your life that you feel connected to as a healer, um, you can absolutely go into an Akashic session if they know how to do the collapsing. A lot of the Akashic courses that are out there and a lot of the healers at this time that are doing it are just reading the information and validating things you already know, rather than helping you with the evolution that comes on the other side of that piece of information. So that's just what you would want to watch out for when you are looking for somebody to help you. Okay, that piece is really, really important. Vi, I feel like you have something like a question to bring in. No, you're okay. All right. Natalie sharing all of her relationships have been with narcissists. Okay. Um, Sarah, never feeling like I fit in any community, just a starseed thing or Akashic. Uh, Akashic. <laughs> the starseed thing, actually, once you've integrated that, you feel like you can belong literally anywhere, which is really interesting because once you bring all your pieces of you home, it's so familiar to hang out with anybody that you can see their soul essence with. But the Akashic Records is all about separation. It's all about keeping you distanced and away from code. Think about this. When we get self-obsessed with a particular thing going on in our life, when we are so entrenched in this particular drama, trauma, relationship, money, job, whatever it is, we often shut out the rest of the world. And as we do that, our sensors are off and we're not necessarily bringing in the frequencies and the understanding and the coding to help us move through to the other side. So the Akashic records in their installation, part of their planning is to keep us on our own hamster wheel and our own loop star seeds. On the other hand, once we've integrated that and we've gotten some space, we are so good at getting into community, giving this code, giving this code, this awareness, this awareness, and we just come together and it's like, oh, coming home. Now, I will say to you, if you have never been around a awakened star seed in person, you need to because and Violet, maybe you can share more of your experiences with the retreats. And, you know, if any of my students are on here that have been to some of my retreats, if you guys could share um, that experience, how different it is being digital versus coming together, that would be awesome. 
But when we come together and we're all willing to be in something we call an entangled hierarchy, funny, just teaching this in decodes last night, we start to recognize that in one moment, I might be the teacher and the healer, but in the next, that may be you. And as we start to open up to that and, you know, Violet starts to recognize that she has just as much to offer me as I do to her, we start passing code. We start passing frequencies of light. And as we do that, we start unwinding everything we are trying to seek. We start accelerating at a really quick state and new capacities come on. Vi, do you want to share your experience from the past week and maybe some of the retreat stuff you've been on? Yeah. So I used to be somebody who was um, I would consider myself to be at some point, uh, before I started doing this work, very depressed, very, um, I was really discouraged by what I was seeing around me. As far as society went, I felt like things were supposed to be very different from how the world was operating. There's so much hate and all of these awful things. And I really let it bring me down. And, um, what I noticed looking back is that I was also very separated from everyone. I was completely alone. I would consider myself to be a lone wolf, you know, and I don't think there's anything wrong with being good on your own. I think that can be very empowering, but I was taking it to a place where I was completely cutting myself off from everyone else. And what I found was when I took the opportunity that came up before me to start joining some of these classes online, that started to shift. Um, but it also only took me so far. So what I noticed was there were certain people in my classes that I was automatically having a connection to, um, like they were sort of interesting to me, or um, I don't really know how else to explain it. We probably had cords and contracts to each other. So they were like um, more in my awareness than some of the other people in my classes. Um, and so we would start talking and everything. But then what I noticed was when we actually all came together in person, there were people that I had almost written off in the online groups because I couldn't get a read on their energy. So they were often people who either would show up to class and have their cameras off, which happens, or they would have their cameras on, but I would never get to hear them speak. And so I would just be like trying to figure out who these people are just by looking at like a head on a screen, right? Or even just a blank screen. And so, yeah, it, there were certain people that I was connecting more with online, but then when you got together in person, it adds such a, it's like when you meet a person in person, all of who they are comes with that. And it's such a like rich tapestry of that person's energy. You can pick it up in such a more rich experience of who they are. And um, yes, you can do energy work distance. You can pick things up from people. Distance totally, totally works. But being in person with other people is just something beyond anything. And so what I found was there also seems to be, and I would really love to hear everybody else's perspective on this, if this is something you've experienced, this feeling of, I am all alone. Nobody understands me. I am not wanting to get together with other people. I just want to stay in my house um, because I need to protect my energy. All of these sort of thoughts and feelings and beliefs that keep circling that makes you actually feel more separate from everyone. And so what I would encourage you guys to do is if you're getting sort of an exciting feeling, if something comes up to get together in person, like a, a circle in your community, I know things are a little bit dicey right now with everything going on in the world with getting together, but, um, you know, take those baby steps. If it's an online circle first, like being here in this group is like huge. It's huge. So you guys are part of this family and we are all here together, but taking the next step and actually meeting people in person provides so much more value. And I know for me, like I said, at the very beginning of this, all of my abilities have amplified and come up so much louder and stronger when I was in a group situation and being in retreats and workshops um, in person takes things that would online take me like a year to accomplish. I get done in like three to five days. It's insane. So much faster and you get to meet everybody and feel their energy in a completely new, much more robust, much more beautiful way. It's so so I am an advocate for retreats and in-person events. It's so true. Like I feel like I can level people up in one weekend, 
give me one weekend with you in person and I can change your life. Like it's amazing what coming online is amazing because we have these connections, we have the conversations, we have insight, we have ideas, we have things that we want to go research. But once you're in person, oh man, like buckle up Betty, because <laughs> it's going to go fast, especially when you're around people who are willing to accelerate fast. You know, there's something that we've been talking about a lot in my decodes community at this time. These are my, um, advanced healers that are really working on becoming quantum healers that can accelerate people really quickly. We've been talking about this idea of how people have become addicted to continuity, right? Like we, we want that stepping stone to go from here to here to here. Whereas like with these starseed things, we have the choice. We don't have to keep suffering. We don't have to stay in this particular energy. We can go from here and not have to do the continuity over to here if we want to. And I truly believe that bringing on this ability to be in your own Akashic records and clearing this junk is exactly what has given all of my advanced students the ability to do just that. So um, I know we're getting up to our hour mark, so I just want to wrap up a little bit here and let you guys know that we're going to continue doing these conversations in consciousness. I love sharing this kind of information, definitely a teacher and a sharer at heart. So if there's particular topics that you want to see me and my team explore, definitely leave that in the comments below so that we can check back and make sure we are feeding your curiosity. If you guys want more information on the Akashic Records, I do have a pre-recorded course that I do have online and available to you guys that you can access. We also will be doing some more work with the Akashic Records when the Starseed Accelerator starts. So please don't worry, there will be some exercises for you too. So everything is within reach. We're creating an opportunity for all of you guys to get a massive dose of magic in a very short amount of time. So I'm super excited about that. Um, and then just to wrap it up, here's what I would highly recommend if some of the stuff from here resonated with you. If you were going to take the next step and learn the Akashic Records, the first step is to actually learn truth testing. Okay, so the next step is not Akashic Records. The first step is to learn truth testing. That video course is available for free in your guys' libraries if you already have it, or it's also on my YouTube channel. We can put links in this video later for you guys learn the truth testing and start practicing it all day, every day on everything. Should I brush my hair with this hairbrush or should I put on lip chap right now? Brush your hair, Caitlin. It's a mess. Okay, cool. Um, use it for the most mundane experiences because when you practice it and you learn to trust your instincts with the little silly things, when the big stuff gets presented to you, you can truth test it. You can follow through and you'll know what's right every single time. That's step number one. Step number two is to go in and to learn your Akashic Records. And whether you resonate with me and you want to learn from my information, fantastic. I'm happy to have you. Or if there's another instructor out there who's calling your name and you're like, I need to learn from them. That's great too. I want you guys to bring that ability on board because it's just going to accelerate you so much faster. Okay. There are absolutely free resources out on YouTube. So you guys can search that way too. If money is a thing for you still in this reality, definitely do your research, get out there, do your reading, try the meditations. Maybe I'll put out a meditation on this. Do you guys want that? If I record an Akashic entry meditation, maybe that would be something that the group would like. I think I should. Okay. Yeah. Violet's like, yeah, do that. Okay. I will. Um, so we'll try to give you guys some opportunities to get into this. All right. Like I said, um, drop your ideas for what you'd like to see the next conversations in consciousness include. I'm happy to get on here and share with you guys for another hour of mind blowing amazingness. <laughs> and definitely let me know what you guys thought of today's conversation. I really want to know what your takeaway was, what your aha is, what you're like, oh my God, my mind is blown on. Let me know that in the comments below. And of course, if you guys want to share this with friends and family later, it will also be on my YouTube channel and you can do so from there. All right. Last announcement, following this post up in the group, I'm going to open the contest. So you guys are going to have the ability to win one of five prizes. I'm giving away five. I couldn't do one. I was like, I can't do one winner. There's like 1,700 of them in here. That's lame. So we're doing five. You'll have the chance to win one of two personal sessions where we'll do Starseed Accelerations. We can go into your Akashic Records if you want. Um, or one of two Akashic Records courses. So you could end up getting it for free. Um, and 
the last one is a full year in my academy where you get mentorship and get to be into this stuff all the time with all the lessons and information. So I'm doing a huge giveaway. I'm super excited about this and you guys will have a chance to enter like within the next five minutes. So definitely check the post in the group. Other than that, Violet, thank you for your contributions, keeping on top of the chat, adding your interesting points of view throughout the whole thing. Super appreciate you. We'll see you all next time. Adios guys.